Hi guys, welcome back. I, uh, I just want to introduce you very quickly to a few of the ideas we're going to need for the project this week. The project's called the Demon Algorithm, and it uses a lot of Monte Carlo techniques, which basically revolve around generating random numbers and trying to use that to simulate some kind of real randomness in nature or some random process. So the first thing I need to do is to uh, introduce you to the basic source of random numbers that we have. It's called the RAN function. So I'll fire up PyLab and just call the RAN function. You can see what it does is it returns a number. The number is kind of a random number. If I run it again, I'll get a different number, and so on. The number you get is a random number between 0 and 1, possibly including 0, but never quite getting to 1. So it goes up to 0 0.99999 or something like that. Now, there's a variation of the RAND function where you pass in a number, an integer, and if you do that, it returns an array, a NumPy array, with that many random numbers in it. So you can use this to very quickly generate a large number of random numbers. And a NumPy array has some nice features that have to do with uh, logic. If I wanted to ask, let's say, let's assign this random array to uh, a variable x, and then let's ask the variable x uh, if it's less than 0.5. Well, of course, x is an array, so I can't ask an, if an array is less than 0.5, but I can ask if the elements of the array are less than 0.5, and you can see what happens here is that these guys are not, the first two are not, but the third one and the fifth one are. This guy's less than a half, and that guy's less than a half. So you can see that when you compare a NumPy array with a, a floating point value, what you get is a NumPy array of Booleans, which can be quite handy. There's another function called where, and what where does, you give it three arguments. The first argument is a Boolean array. The second and third argument are the values that NumPy is going to use for the true and false elements. So if I have um, Alice and Bob, notice it gives me an array of strings with either Alice if the Boolean is true, or Bob if the Boolean is false. I can also generate a numerical array by putting in numbers here. Okay, And you can also use actual arrays. You could use an array for the true slot and an array for the false slot, and then it will pluck values from one array or the other, uh, depending on if the Boolean is true or false. So you could say put x here and put 0 there, and then what you'll get is when it's, uh, when it's false, you get 0. When it's true, you get whatever's in x. So there's a lot of fun games you can play. But the thing I want to do is to simulate a particular problem that I'm interested in having you guys consider. It's called the drunken sailor problem. The drunken sailor problem is the following. You have a sailor, obviously, who is uh, inebriated, and he needs to get home. So he starts out probably at the front door of the bar, and he's trying to walk home, but unfortunately, because of his state of inebriation, he's unable to walk reliably. He's equally likely to go forwards or backwards. And the question is, how far is he after so many steps? And the answer is, <clears throat> you flip a coin for each step, it's a 50% chance, it's heads or tails, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, he goes forwards when it's heads, backwards when it's tails, and so you end up with a situation like this. Here we have exactly that these become displacements. I let the plus one re represent a forward step, the minus one represent a backward step, and the sum of the step displacements is going to give me the final position of the sailor. So there you have it. He's at negative one. And I can run this over and over again by, re by regenerating the x's and rerunning. So you see how that works. If I go back up here, boom, boom, I get another displacement and so on. So this gives me a very easy way to simulate the motion of a, a particle or a sailor that has some randomness so that it goes uh, equally forwards and backwards. Now there's a couple of other things you can do with, uh, with RAND. It turns out, let's say I wanted to have 10 sailors taking five steps. If I supply two numbers to the RAND function, I actually get a two-dimensional array. And um, then if I apply my same logic, first let's look at the where. You see that this gets converted into a series of displacements. And then I can add the displacements for a single sailor by using the sum function. But I want to specify that I'd like to only add along one axis. That's the zero axis. 